Welcome to Young Earth Today, episode 2025, Canada Day, Tree Rings, and the Youthful World. Our mascot for today is uh, Tino the Trilobite. Say hi to Tino. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So, Canada Day was yesterday, uh, and that's great. So, Canada Day, Canada Day, and uh, the 4th of July is coming up. So, if y'all see some great fireworks, I hope you have fun with that. So, if it is uh, Canada Day, then uh, take off A. But where are we going to take off to? Uh, the Great White North? Well, not quite that far. But uh, in our mind, at least, we're going to take a trip to uh, just east of Fresno to the Sequoia National Forest and look at those giant redwoods. And those are the ones that have tons and tons of rings, thousands actually. And the trees are so big, you can drive through them. So we're going to talk about origins and the age of the earth and related issues. So when we see these thousands of rings, uh, sometimes what's done with them, so there's uh, uh, rainier years and drier years, and so you have uh, from one year to the next, it's wider or narrower. So uh, what's done is it's tried to match up those, correlate it with another tree. So you take one tree and match it up to another tree, and what you get is you get a longer chronology. And then we take those two trees and match it up to an even another tree, and that creates an even a longer chronology. And allegedly, supposedly, we might get many, many, many thousands of years, but uh, that sometimes overlooks like droughts and skips, and in some years you could have multiple rainy seasons and so multiple rains, so it kind of overlooks that. But what if we look at individual trees? Back to California, if we say hello to Methuselah, the bristlecone pine, that tree is about 4,600 years. So why isn't it 5,000 or 6,000? That's something to think about. So maybe that's a break. Maybe there was a great catastrophe at that point in time. Now, Georges Cuvier, the father of paleontology, held exactly that view, that just a few thousand years, there was indeed a global catastrophe. Now, if we look at that, are there uh, some uh, more mainstream people that will give us uh, an idea of, of that concept of catastrophe? Well, I would refer you to uh, this book, The New Catastrophism, De Derek Ager. It's published by Cambridge University Press. And Ager's uh, uh, punchline is that uh, most of the rock formations are formed rapidly. Now, he did not hold to my position that the Earth is thousands, not billions of years old. But at least for each individual formation, we're on the same page. So it's the new catastrophism, Derek Ager. Highly recommend it. So we have this catastrophic event. What else would point to that? Uh, around the, the world, we have these global flood traditions that, uh, from various cultural groups, and that seems to point to a universal event. So that's one aspect. Now, uh, if we look at the tree rings in the fossil record, what kinds of trees have tree rings? Well, here is a pine uh, from Canada again, Canada Day, everybody, and it's 140 million years is what it's dated at, and of course, pine trees have tree rings. So. Uh, do tree rings, say, older than 75 million years old uh, exist in the fossil record? Yes. Uh, but the question is, do we find 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000 uh, tree rings on the individual tree? That's what I'm challenging. So far as I know, there are none. And here's uh, ginkgo. You might take ginkgo biloba for your health or your, to help your brain out. And it's from Arizona, and it's dated at 220 million. So ginkgo has rings. There's another one. And this is called Araucaria, and uh, it's from Madagascar, and it's dated at 220 million years. The monkey puzzle tree is a nickname for one of the varieties, and the current living monkey puzzle tree can live over 700 years. So, uh, we have uh, trees within that time frame uh, that have rings, but we don't have 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000 rings. Notice I started with 2,000. So, where can we take the beginning of this uh, catastrophe? Well, if you've been to the Grand Canyon, you notice you have all these layers, but at the bottom, the layers go this way. That's called the Great Unconformity, and that's a global thing. So, what that would seem to Im impact, that that's the beginning of this uh, great uh, catastrophe. So, if we don't find the 2,000 rings, maybe we could put 2,000 years as kind of an estimate before that. And that would even uh, kind of correspond with, say, the Mayans' uh, view of the chronology of the whole thing. So. Uh, if we, we go with that, so we have 2,000 years, we have this short uh, catastrophe, and then the Methuselah's tree is 4,600. You piece all those together, you do get a short uh, view of the Earth, a youthful world, 
in a, a world that's thousands of years old, not millions or billions of years old, as this standard model would go for. Now, if you want to learn more about my argument regarding the tree rings and how that relates to the age of the Earth controversy, I would recommend uh, my book, uh, Yes, Young Earth Science. And uh, I go into the argument pretty deeply. And, uh, and then a little more is in my more recent book, Is a Young Earth Possible? I also get into the tree rings. And where would you go to get that? Uh, just go to uh, totalyouth.us, totalyouth.us for total truth, support Earth's youth. Totalyouth.us, and you can get those books and uh, have fun with that. Now, I want to talk about my more recent book. And uh, before we get into that, a message from our Sanctity of Life uh, team, which uh, is actually in here. I have some Sanctity of Life thing there. So here we go. Uh, got row? Maybe not. So, do you know a blind mother who has felt uh, the 3D sculpture of her baby, a blind mother who has felt the 3D sculpture of her baby, and uh, I say from a 3D printer via the ultrasound, a blind mother who has felt the 3D sculpture of her baby, and that mother has decided to kill her son or daughter. Do you know a blind woman, blind mother, who has done that? So, now back to our regularly scheduled uh, show. And so, our book, uh, Biological Essentialism, presents the idea that uh, cats are cats, bats are bats, and humans and apes do not have a common ancestor. That's the basic idea. So even a three-year-old knows the difference between an owl and a gorilla, and I have all animals here, but the book also talks about plants such as a citron, a pomelo, and a mandarin has various hybrids, so I would lump those all into the same essential type of life, retail. So this is a term I'm trying to get going, ETL, essential type of life. So what are some examples of uh, ETLs or essential types of life other than these I have here? And of course, horses is a key one, but here's, uh, here's some. So horses would be one. So I would even include the horses uh, that are in the fossil record with three toes because you have uh, in the same uh, formation, you have some with three toes and the sums that are normal with just one toe. Like uh, you may be a horse person and, and have some that you've ridden. And hydras. So a hydra is a cup with spaghetti on top. And of course, they're tentacles. They have stingers, and, and then uh, they just have one opening. And uh, they're able to move a little bit. There are also some big ones. Uh, some are 8 feet, and then the ocean, uh, 1,500 feet deep. Uh, but some are microscopic. So a hydra is just a cup with uh, spaghetti on top. But it's very unique. So... Uh, that is the concept, is there's variation, but it has limits. So I have horses and hydras, and then we also have humans. This is a Mennonite juice. As far as I know, it's some kind of an herbal tonic. Uh, it's supposed to be good for you. Now, uh, if you've ever been to West Texas Seminole, uh, you'll find some Mennonites, and I had a haircut a few years ago uh, there. And uh, no, it's not really made of Mennonites. But uh, I just wanted to bring out humans are special. We call that human exceptionalism and uh, Mennonite juice. Now, uh, gorillas, like Coco, are smart. In fact, Coco, when Coco uh, ripped uh, the sink off the wall, Coco blamed the cat. Now, that's pretty smart. So, uh, kudos to Coco, who passed in uh, uh, 2018. So, uh, d did Coco ever make glass? Uh, did Coco ever build a library? Did Coco and her friends uh, create the Eiffel Tower? I don't think so. So, when we put all this together, you may say, is there a scientist with this uh, crazy biological essentialism or this young earth concept? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, since we have the 4th of July coming up, I thought I'd reference uh, uh, Ben Franklin. He says, go fly kite and electricity. So definitely a scientist. And then it says, uh, what did Ben Mozart and Beethoven do with 37 gla glass bowls and a case filled with water? I don't know, maybe it's something to do with electricity. Uh, but the idea is uh, Ben Franklin, to the best of my knowledge, did hold to biological essentialism. That is, that essential types of life vary within limits. And definitely he held to the young earth view. So, we put all that together. I'd appreciate get, getting the merch. Here's the book right here. And the same thing, you just go to uh, totalyouth.us slash merch, M-E-R-C-H, totalyouth.us slash merch. And there's mugs and some other items. Appreciate your support. So uh, please uh, like, like, and subscribe. We appreciate you very much. See you next time 
on Young Earth Today. Thank you. God bless you and have a great day.